Hello and welcome to GeoBiz. My name is Arup Das Gupta. Today we are in conversation with Dr. Kiran Kumar, Chairman of Indian Space Research Organization and Secretary Department of Space. Dr. Kiran Kumar, first of all, let me thank you on behalf of Geospatial Media and Communications for sparing your time to talk to us about ISRO, what's new and what's going to be, we can look forward in the future. We, I saw in the newspaper this report about the uh, Indo-US uh, SAR satellite called NISAR and that you are going to uh, bring together uh, students and actually promote PhD programs uh, for them. So could you tell us something more about that? Yeah, this uh, NISAR program, what is called the NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Program <coughs> is one of the programs uh, which has emerged as an important link between ISRO and NASA and um, working together for a common mission for global data generation. NASA had been working on uh, this program of uh, what they have the decadal program selection process. So they were looking at a system where you can have a synthetic aperture radar which is again what is being attempted in this is a new concept called the SweepSAR concept which enables providing large swaths and as a result high repetitivity and um, so this they had uh, we had interaction with them and then finally we have actually concluded the program itself in the sense that we have decided that we will work together this is going to be a dual frequency L and S band L band portion of the electronic hardware NASA JPL will do, S band segment we will do. So this is also an addition to their originally planned only L band system and the payloads uh, will be built, uh, the, this carries a 12 meter diameter antenna for uh, SAR and then uh, the payload integration will happen at uh, JPL and the payload will be brought to India, we will build a satellite and we will launch it. We are now looking at a launch time frame of 2020-2021 time frame. Now already the program is fully approved on both sides, both our side as well as their side and work is in progress for more than two years. And uh, one of the key capabilities this satellite will provide is you can get uh, repeat pass interferometric observation capability in both L and S band and it covers the entire globe once in 12 days. What we have. And there are different modes of operation which can give between 3 meter to 50 meter resolution depending on which mode you operate. You also get polarimetry data on this thing. In terms of for us it provides extremely good inputs for biomass estimation and also some of the activities related to glaciers and then even soil moisture related some of the studies and then apart from that for global it provides for ice sheet formation and more than anything else this provides because of the repeat pass interferometry you will be able to study on the surface deformations on the earth surface. It can go to very high accuracies to the tune of few centimeters changes in the surface uh, can be monitored and since this can be done at a regular interval this is expected to provide an extremely good database for R&D in earthquake, earthquake precursor generation and monitoring related activities. So we are all excited about that and uh, we have just yesterday a program started where the second science meet in the country where more than about 350 people from various uh, government institutions, academic institutions have all come together. This is the second of this kind. Last year also we had a similar one and yesterday we also made it known that since this is going to be a 2020-21 time frame, we are trying to prepare the users effectively by bringing in simulation data. We are also building an aircraft which will carry L and S band frequency data generation and using such data doing research and then trying to find come up with uh, utilization plans and operational utilization. This is where we have a significant plan of utilizing academic institution plus students who want to do their PhD work. We want to support by providing necessary funding either through IAST or independently. So this is one of the activities which we have taken up in uh, and compared to our earlier times now we are looking far in ahead and much of the information that is required for doing this activity both from our own data sources, aircraft what we are going to fly plus what NASA is able to provide on similar will all be used for generating such a thing. So it is going to be a really good time for academic institutions to make use of this opportunity and then contribute to the total project development as well as utilization.
So this is uh, one good example of uh, you know an international cooperation. Uh, are there any other such uh, international cooperations that uh, ISRO is uh, doing or planning to do? Yeah, as you are probably aware, uh, currently what happens is as both part of our CIOS, CGMS and uh, GIOS interactions also. One of the thing we are seeing is progressively all space agencies have crunch from funding and all that. So, this is one of the thing which is driving all the space agencies to work together and then find out how they can do common programs. If we take our own, we are familiar, Megatropics is one of the programs which we did and currently also it is providing extremely useful data on uh, Sapphire which is a, our, um, it is up from 30, 17 gigahertz to almost uh, 187 gigahertz frequency sounding capability it provides in microwave. And this data is operationally going into our numerical weather forecasting models of NCMRWF as well as IMD. And so this is one good example where payloads came from Kenas, satellite was built by us and we launched it. So this is one program. Similarly, Saral we did where altimeter, K band altimeter, which is a new development. So far it was all lower frequencies which was there. Then current, this is what is already in place. Now we are also working on dual frequency scatterometer studies. We are working with NASA as well as JAXA on possible common missions. Then we are also working with uh, KNES for looking at one of their infrared uh, imaging system being hosted on one of our satellites uh, in future re resource set series. We are also discussing with uh, Canada a large number of space agencies for making use of uh, the space capability what we have complementing them, payloads taken from elsewhere, satellite built by us, launch by us, this kind of thing. So this is a continuous process and the n more and more interaction is happening on this. Uh, what about uh, this, we heard about the uh, SARC satellite and uh, also… Yeah, SARC satellite is another extremely interesting development that has happened with the current government taking initiative on that. So what is being attempted here is, we are trying to provide to each of the SARC countries something like between one to two transponders. That transponder they can use for completely that their country's usage, whether they want to use it for broadcasting or te telecommunication or telemedicine, teleeducation, whatever application they have in mind can be built around that transponder availability to their country. And there will also be some common linkages where all these countries will be linked together in my communication, whether it is for providing hotline to the, the state uh, you can say representatives or people who are running the country. In addition to that for disaster monitoring, meteorological data exchange and even library information exchange. So that these all these countries are linked together and there is a connectivity available to them which can be used among these many applications. In addition to that whatever else these countries uh, the SARC secretariat itself wants to do. So the basic idea is to provide to each other country exclusive capability for that which they can use. In addition to that have a common linkage and use it for many of the common activities. So that is the idea.